Hello YouTube, Jeff Kelly here. I was just thinking today about how I got into this reloading stuff and how I got into it in reverse. Um, the first machine I got was the Dillon 650. Not knowing anything about reloading and uh, just wanted to make as much ammunition as I could to spray and pray and uh, have a good time and it started with the uh, with the Dillon 650. Thinking back on it, it uh, after loading about 70,000 rounds I think over the last four years that uh, it worked out pretty well. I got uh, one squib out of the whole batch and went through some different ups and downs on what different kinds of things to use but when I ordered the uh, the Dillon I wanted to get everything that I possibly could on it so I got the uh, case feeder and uh, I got the uh, primer alarm and I got the uh, powder alarm and one thing I did get too was the uh, powder alarm that goes down the hopper for the powder because I was loading bullets one day and didn't look up and I loaded about six or seven of them without any powder in them so I immediately uh, got that. Uh, all the case gauges and everything that went along with the Dillon. So that's how I started and these are the rounds that I load on the uh, on the Dillon starting from the left 9 millimeter 38 super 9 by 25 Dillon 40 caliber uh, 10 millimeter 38 special 400 Corbon 40 Super, uh, uh, 44 Special, uh, 45 Auto Rim, 45 ACP, 45 Colt, 460 Roland, and 500 Magnum. Uh, I can also do uh, 454 Casul and 460 uh, Magnum as well, but I as yet haven't loaded any of those rounds. So these are the rounds that I'm loading on the Dillon 650. Um, I kind of uh, went overboard on uh, getting primers and uh, bullets and that sort of thing. And uh, I've got uh, some powder here, one of every powder that I like to use. And then I got uh, a bunch of books. I got the usual books, the Lyman and the Spear and Nosler and all the bullet books. And I've said before that I like using the bullet books better than the powder books because uh, they really do workups on these uh, velocities and things. But then I uh, started uh, getting interested in some of the older loads and uh, wanted to get some books from years gone by, 1960s and so. So I went on eBay and you can get them very cheaply. I got uh, the Sierra books and I got some uh, old 1960s Lyman books and um, some Spear 1960s spear books and you can really uh, get an idea of how they were loading ammunition back then they uh, I think they like to go a little bit over the maximum loads today because so many of these uh, firms are worried about lawsuits which I guess they should be since attorneys like to sue so much but uh, back then you got some uh, pretty stout loads as they say so um, that's uh, 
one of the things that I did when I uh, started reloading and then I got interested in the uh, 5.7 and that took me to a whole different level because the Dillon of course is a progressive and when you need uh, very precise uh, and um, uh, repeatable uh, overall links this uh, plate has got 15 thousandths play in it uh, that's I got that from Dylan that's the, the standard and the uh, RAM is uh, in the center of course but the um, round is on the edge so when you're looking for real precision you want to um, go to something else so I went and got a Redding T7 um, turret press this is you know quite an excellent press um, it's the RAM of course goes up the center and you get a nice even precision uh, load on anything you're doing that precisely so the 5.7 was really the impetus of getting this uh, this press here um, I put it on an inline fabrication uh, stand and got some inline fabrication uh, die holders uh, for the wall and um, got a couple of uh, extra tool heads for other rounds so let me just uh, and also of course a powder measure and a case trimmer and the Dillon swager which you need for the 5.7 now here's what I load that is takes a little more precision uh, and the uh, starting from the uh, left that's the 221 Remington Fireball uh, the 22 TCM the 22 Hornet the 22 Remington Jet and there's what started um, all this uh, other stuff the uh, five seven um, and then next to that is the two two three and then the uh, 22 250 and then I wanted to they don't make 500 specials anymore Corbon was making those back in 2008 so I wanted to uh, see if I could make a 500 special so I've been taking 500 magnum brass cutting them down with a pipe cutter and making uh, 500 specials which is a very pleasant load to shoot out of the 500 uh, magnum so uh, those are the ones that I do on the single stage press so after I got the turret press and really all it is is a single stage press but it gives you the option of just one click instead of screwing in a die over and over and over again I decided to uh, get a Big Boss 2 press from Redding and here this one is right here um, <laughs> right now this is actually my favorite press because I've shot so many rounds using the Dillon just making massive amounts of, uh, of rounds that I like to shoot more precision and I don't shoot as many rounds per trip to the range and I go every weekend uh, so I can go slower and and uh, relax more and make some rounds on this and this is the one I use to make the um, 500 special and then I also use this one to 
that black dye there is the red and universal decapper. So I like to uh, uh, decap the brass without uh, fully sizing them. And then I like to take and run them through the um, uh, Hornaday uh, ultrasonic cleaner before I uh, go through the motions of uh, um, full length sizing them and, and going, to, going through that process. The uh, single stage press is also excellent for using uh, trim dies, which I have a trim die right here. And you just uh, uh, force the end of the uh, case through the, through the end of the trim die and take a file and uh, trim off the end and then uh, chamfer and deburr it. And that works beautifully. Uh, the other thing the single stage press works beautifully on is uh, this bullet puller. Uh, you can just pull if you really make a, a big mistake and do the wrong overall length or or just uh, put the wrong bullet in or whatever you can pull bullets uh, with that uh, RCBS bullet puller and the single stage press in a matter of minutes over and over and over again you can just pull them out really really very quickly so trimming uh, decapping bullet pulling is um, really nice on this single stage press and then next to it I have the inline fabrication uh, shell holders uh, and also you have uh, some extended shell holders here for um, certain uh, cases the uh, 22 jet and others take those extended ones and then this is also nice for holding your collets for the that are needed in the uh, bullet puller, the RCBS bullet puller. So they kind of, uh, you can see the collets hanging through on the bottom. Uh, all very convenient to uh, get to. But uh, so I kind of, I kind of did the reloading thing in reverse, and the Reading single stage uh, Big Boss Two uh, is the press that I use mostly today. Uh, the difference between the Big Boss 2 and the Big Boss 1 is you can see that primer tube that goes down there. That's 50 primers caught in that tube. And the primers just go right down the middle of the ram, as you can see right there. On the Big Boss 1, they have a hole in the side over here and they come out into a magnetic container so they don't have that tube I think the tube is much more convenient uh, also a good feature of this uh, press is that it's slanted this way so it makes it very easy to get rounds in there very convenient it's really the best single stage press that I can find out there but uh, that's uh, that's kind of my uh, journey through the reloading process. I did it in reverse, started with a Dillon Progressive and uh, ended up with a single stage. So uh, I guess I'll be talking to you soon. Please like and subscribe and uh, join the NRA. I'll talk to you soon.